Let's do a trickier one. This one I don't think I've assigned. So, I think this is 13. So they say, differentiate. So you've got two challenges here. Number one, just algebraically, it's a little more intense. Okay, number two, oops, they're adding an extra step in that you're going to have to evaluate um, a definite interval. But that's fine. We can do that. It's not more difficult. It's just a bit longer. All right. <coughs> so let's start off. The derivative of x squared e to the minus x squared. Okay, let's have a go. There's product rule here, but there's also chain rule, but it's an easy chain rule. Chain rule with e is pretty simple, okay? So, what should we write? What's the first thing? There's u here and v here. Okay, so depending on whether you do v u dash u v dash or the other way around doesn't matter because it's a sum okay i think on this side what did we start with where did we go here okay so we were going u v dash so let's do that over here there's u what's v dash in this case here's where chain rule comes in differentiate the inside what is the derivative of the inside it's minus 2x okay. do yourself a favor and have copious amounts of brackets around you can always uh, evaluate things a lot easier when there's more brackets rather than less. So just so you don't confuse your terms and accidentally write x squared minus 2x, which is, it's not, there's multiplication. There's the outside, sorry, the inside. What's the do of the outside? It's, it's e to the power of something, which just, when you differentiate it, returns itself. Okay. So you got e to the minus x squared there. Good, there's the first half. What's the other half look like? You've got the e to the minus x squared there, which hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And then you multiply by yes. u dash, yeah? <coughs> okay, now, pause for a second. Uh, I know it's your instinct just to, to simplify blindly, which we will simplify in a second, but you always remember where you want to head, okay? So this is the term we're after, yeah? x cubed e to the minus x squared. So where is it? Where is the x cubed? It's, um, it's hiding it here, isn't it? We just haven't actually expanded it out, right? But that's what we're going to go after. It's not quite what we want, is it? It's got some extra fluff flying around, okay? So just keep that in mind. We're going to simplify out in a minute, okay? So what do we got? Minus 2x cubed e to the minus x squared plus 2x. And there's a derivative. Okay, so being that what we've got doesn't have this minus 2 hanging out the front, okay, I think we would want to do two things. We want to make it the subject, and then we want to get rid of that minus 2, okay? So let's do that. Let's see here. Let's move him over left hand side. So I'm going to get 2x cubed e to the minus x squared. Is that okay? Just add it to both sides. Over here, I've got this guy is positive. And I'm subtracting this derivative. Yep, swapping places, really. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Now, at this stage on our other question, this was where we integrated everything, OK? But I'm not quite there yet. I want to get rid of this 2. So I reckon you could do that in the one line. Divide by 2 here. Divide by 2. Now, by the way, you see a 2 there, so I could have just cancelled the 2. Why didn't I do that? Can anyone see why? Because I'm always trying to think a step ahead and make things as simple as I can. Why is it actually in my interest to leave that 2 where it is? What's the next step? What am I about to do? I'm about to integrate, aren't I? With respect to x. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this guy, easy to integrate, because I know exactly where it ends up. It's going to end up there without the derivative on the front, okay? But what does this become? This is not a standard integral, but I think it's close enough to one that you can work it out, right? Where's it going to go? Well, see that 2x, right? That 2x is significant because it's, well, it's almost the derivative of the inside function, okay? So I'm going to use reverse chain rule here with an exponential function. Can you see that? 
it's almost in the form f dash e to the f. Okay? The difference is it's not f dash, is it? It's minus f dash. Okay? So therefore, I mean I could have half times two, there would be x there, but I'd eventually have to put the two back anyway. Okay, so that's why I just leave it there. So I've got a half out the front. <coughs> okay, what happens? When you integrate this, you have minus, because of that minus, right? e to the minus x squared plus a constant. You happy with that? If you're sort of, I'm getting confused, there are too many minus signs around. The great thing about any kind of integration question is you can always check by differentiating. You guys can do differentiation in your sleep, one hand tied behind your back. So you can just double check that. What would happen? You do the inside function, minus 2x comes out the front, negatives cancel, you're fine. Great. Then we've got this minus the index, so you integrate it and just put it like this. Okay. Now, because I did both integrals at the same time, I've just got one constant, which is nice. So I don't have to do that business with introducing a second constant. Okay. okay. How are we going? Does it look okay at the moment? Pause. What do I do now? What am I supposed to do? Where was the question headed again? It was, it was headed toward this definite integral, right? So I'm really close, I'm quite close. Uh, all I need to do is change this from an indefinite integral, which is what it is right now, and slap some upper and lower bounds on it. Yeah. So if I put one and two here, what difference does that make to the right hand side? Okay. Well, I've got this constant at the front, so I'm just gonna leave him there, okay? Now this is what I'm going to have to evaluate, isn't it? So I'm going to put some square brackets here. Minus e to the minus x squared. Now because there's a constant here, the reason there's a constant is because this is indefinite, right? But now that I have some boundaries, I don't need to worry about the constant because I'll just add and then subtract it, it would become insignificant. So I've got this. Between your boundaries. Okay. Now I think from memory, this question, I think I said there were some intermediate steps here. Um, and part of it I think was factorizing this. So let's just quickly do that. A half, and if I took out a factor of minus e to the minus x squared, you'd end up with one plus x squared. Yeah? Is that about right? Okay, now what? Just evaluate, yeah? I think we've done all the hard work. It's just kind of a bit mechanical from here, but let's just go through it for the sake of it, okay? A half times. All right, what do you get here? Actually, I might as well, since that minus sign's there, I might as well card out the front. Is that okay? It's just a constant. Um, e to the power of minus four. Then it's one plus four. There's my upper bound, now I'll do Lower bound, e to the minus one. One plus one, end. Okay, what have I got here? I don't like negative indices, so I'm going to get rid of them. E to the four, minus two on e. Does that look okay? Now there's a negative here and a negative here, so I might as well turn them around. Two on e. 5 on e to the 4. Less negatives, more better. Okay. I've got a fraction down here. It's almost on a common denominator. If I change that to a 4, what do I have to do with the numerator? I, I multiplied by e cubed, didn't I? So that's going to be an e cubed up the top. Is that okay? Now that it's the same denominator, I've run out of space, but I'll put them over here. Half out the front. 2e cubed minus 5, same denominator, and I guess I'll just put the 2 in, because I don't need to keep it separate any longer. Okay. So, was it a difficult question? <laughs> uh, I think it was a long question, 
but none of the steps were particularly complicated, right? So long as you were patient with it and you were careful with your algebra, you'll be fine. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, so uh, today is the, um, because tomorrow we have, some of us have a morning class, but on Monday I think you guys have photos and it takes a maths lesson. So this is our last three unit lesson until Tuesday when I think we have like three lessons in a row to make up for it. <laughs> I didn't pick it. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you um, your homework for the next exercise. Which is 13D, which is just taking the same ideas, but applying it to areas and volumes. That's all. Okay, so what I'd like you to do there is. Those questions. That's exercise 13D on areas and volumes. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know.